Well, I had planned to go flying today. I took Pam to the airport about 3 o'clock. On the way home, it started raining. <laughs> I was, everything was at the house waiting for me to come home, and off I was going to go. Needless to say, that didn't happen. But four hours or so, three and a half hours, whatever, later, about 7 o'clock, mm, it had quit raining, and I decided to go for it here at the house, that flight where what I really have to trust here is that this thing will come home, return to launch, return to home. So I went out and flew the little five inch. So I'd flown it once before with the little 1400 milliamp hour 6S in it. I knew it would fly it for about five minutes. So off I went. I was going to fly out over the orchard and test the return to launch. You can see me right there. And I'm going to use the Recon HD goggles to view the walk snail. Now I'm going to give this flight a C, maybe even a C minus, because there were so many problems. First of all, you can see it didn't want to loiter right here. I'll show you that at the big field because I'm going to let it drift till it stops. I got it up a little higher and it seemed to lock up loiter a little better so I pulled it over near where I was. I was going to stand over here on, so I could see through the trees and see the quad through the trees. So I got everything ready to go and Oh, I tried to take off once before and it didn't work, so my ending screen was up on the uh, walk snail. Uh, the goggles, were, my glasses immediately fogged up. That's why I'm giving this a low grade. Uh, I actually took my glasses off and threw them on the ground and was just looking into the goggles. But the plate in the back of the goggles was also fogged up so I was having a lot of trouble so I said screw this I took it up to the, where, where it was kind of in the top of the trees where I had a little space and I found that switching the OSD on the radio let that ending screen go away so I actually then did get some uh, telemetry knew my battery voltage number of satellites locked up and stuff and it all looked pretty good so I took off again uh, I sort of stayed in the goggles but couldn't really see in them because it was all fogged up I didn't like it much so I went up above the treetops so I did me a little 360 to get oriented I've never used goggles on a flying platform before. My ground rovers and the little race car I had, and that was even like a year or so ago, and it wasn't through the Walk Snail Recon HD goggles. We're looking west right now. So I just did a, a little 360 to kind of get my first look. I've, and I have looked at this through the uh, Mavic Mini but it's just a cell phone view. It's not a goggles view. So I kind of took a little 360 there, orientation, and my whole thing was to fly it. My intention was to fly it till the end of the battery and let it fail safe and see if it'll come home. I had enough confidence that it wasn't going to get hung up in the top of these trees around here. So I flew towards the farm pond, stepped over towards the trees where I could see through the trees, the platform, and just got it over there. That's when the first, that, that bird came by right there. You're going to see that bird a lot. I think she's after me. Um, so I was up about 200 feet. The failsafe set for 150. 
I uh, dropped it down under 150 so when it fell safe it would go up to 150 and I could see it doing that probably gonna see that bird again here in a second she just flew all around me the whole time I was out right there I don't know if she followed me from the trees right next to the house or she came out of that stand of trees there uh, I may not be able to fly here so there she is again in the top I uh, there she is again and she's circling uh, this is facing south I was having trouble with the walk snail breaking up. The walk snail even shut off completely a couple of times. This is the run cam orange video on the top. And we're looking straight west into the sunset right now. So that kind of blocks up the bottom of the picture with all the light in the top. Uh... I was only holding the walk snail on my face, and every now and then I'd take it away and shake it around and try to get the fog to go out of it. There came the bird back again, and definitely circling, because she's coming by often. See, uh, so the fog had me flipped out nervous the bird had me flipped out and nervous the whole flight had me flipped out and nervous i could just see this thing hanging up in the top of those trees uh the voltage was kept going down i had a 22.5 volt set for fail safe and again, I flew this battery out once before. These are the 150C 1400 milliamp hours for freestyle. Like three minutes or so of freestyle. These aren't for this kind of flying. But I didn't want to have a long. I finally had to hit return to launch. And in the uh, walk snail, I'll show you why I did that. And later, I'll show you why I probably just chickened out too early and it headed I could see it in the goggles it headed for the uh, little hole in the trees there and those on the you're looking at on the other side of the house there are the ones that are going to be cut going to be uh, it did come back over kind of the opening above me and I could watch it quite well on its downward leg and I tested nudging it around with the sticks and landed it. It was all pretty un uneventful. It definitely uh, sorry about that. It definitely uh, is going to work. The return to launch is going to work. I landed it. That was the end of the flight. So it was a successful test for the first time. We'll look at the uh, walk snail with OSD next. I took off line of sight, so I, I didn't realize it was sitting on the stats OSD screen until a few minutes later I put the goggles down. So you can't see that it's really in loiter right now and has about 17 satellites hooked up. <laughs> Just had a handful of it there. Finally got it over where I was. But see, I was looking straight into the sun again, the setting sun. And the walk snail may be a little dark. I might need to. I had darkened it down. Right here is where it first felt. Okay, I, I got it. And it was loitering pretty good right here. I don't know why it didn't want to loiter the first 
as it came up. We'll find that out at the big field where I can just let it drift. So this is where I was getting the goggles down and stuff on where I could see. So I immediately saw that it was sitting on the stats screen, screen four, instead of one of the three that I use. So I felt comfortable enough here to start trying to do something about that screen, or I was just going to land it. Try it again later. There, I put it in OSD2, which is nothing. So at that point, I knew, okay, now I got it. It's working the way it should, OSD screen too, but the darn goggles were fogging up. Glasses were fogging up. I finally threw them on the ground, and then I was back in the goggles, able to start my intended flight. There we go. Pull it down into OSD screen one. All right. Now I can finally do this maiden that'll last already two minutes and 23 seconds into it. <laughs> Almost halfway through it already. Hundred and eighty nine feet going up just a little. Nineteen satellites, point six four HDOP. So after I had sort of done my little three sixty again, I turned east. And said, okay, we're going to go test. We're going to see if it's going to hang up in the top of these trees. There we go. Let's head for the pond. Now, I sort of stepped through towards the tree so I could see between the trunks. But the wax nail didn't seem to like that. Because I didn't go very far this way. You can see it's already down to 72 megabits per second. Uh, I didn't see any red come up on the screen right there, but I did see it when I was flying. Maybe it'll show here. You already saw the bird come by again. 20 satellites. I figured that was far enough away and drop it from 220 feet down And I was just going to hang out there till it fell safe. But my nerves were pretty jangled. And as I went down, the video became worse. I would have thought it would be coming through those trees in front of us just the same way my vision was. But I guess not. This does not show the red outline. I wonder if it'll show. It blacked out two or three times, which is right here. It had blacked out, and this is where it came back. If you notice, the time jumped and the battery voltage jumped down. So I had my failsafe set at 22.5 volts. I was expecting it to return to launch at 22.5. So when I got back, I verified it didn't return to launch at 22.5. There's 22.5. Has to get below that. Has to get to 22.4. So I was kind of flipping out right here going, uh, it still says lo loiter in the upper left. I was thinking, well, maybe it has to get below 22.5. And it does. 
but there's another little trick I'll show you in the perimeters here in a second. There's a 10 second delay. There it hits 22.4 for the first time. Hits 22.5 again, so the 10 second delay, the video also cut out that time. It has to stay at 22.4 for 10 seconds. I went ahead and pulled return to launch, as you can see in the upper left. <laughs> I couldn't wait those 10 seconds. Because the video was stopping. It was literally blacking out. Just a black screen. I'm surprised this doesn't show it. Uh, and when it was doing this, I was happy as a lark. It's headed for the hole. I trusted it would. It did at 150 feet. And 150 feet, hmm, I guess that's okay for around here. It might be 170 or so. It oriented itself to its, actually it oriented itself sort of north, a little more to the right than its takeoff. Twenty-one sats, seven minutes on a 1400 milliamp hour battery, 22.3 volts. That's where I was checking it to see that it would nudge around. And I also yawed it back to so I could see if I was landing on the house. <laughs> and so basically I just brought it in. There was really nothing to it except me not hanging out long enough for the failsafe to actually invoke. So I, I'll give it a C. I did have my cell phone sitting on a tripod next to the fence in the upper yard where, where I was standing. But of course with this view and it not moved or anything, it didn't get much. I didn't have the GoPro on my head because I was using the uh, goggles. So the only thing this camera got was it taking off and coming in for a landing. <laughs> So I went in and looked at the setup and stuff when I got back and sure enough my fail safe is set to 22.5 volts return to launch. Shouldn't be a problem with that. I haven't set these two up yet. By the way on the T1 Ranger heat wing set up the ground control station fail safe. I'll show you that later with the he-wing videos. So over here in the main perimeters, oh, that's an easy place to set it over there and set up, but over here is where, right here's the 22.5 volt failsafe. And it says battery voltage that triggers a low battery failsafe. And it says here, if the battery voltage drops below this voltage, so it's technically 22.4 that begins the failsafe, continuously for more than the period specified by bat low timer, which is right here, and it's set at 10 seconds, Then the vehicle will perform the failsafe specified by the BAT failsafe low act, which is right here, which is a two, and it's return to launch. So everything was set up right. It was just I, just too nervous. I went back and looked at the video. <clears throat> After it did hit. 22.4 consistently, if, it, if within 10 seconds it jumps back to 22.5 or above, it resets the timer. So I went back and looked at the video. You can too if you like. And you can count it out too if you like. Uh, when it hits 22.4 consistently, it was three seconds after that that I pulled the uh, failsafe switch and let it return to launch. I forced it to return to launch. So I was within seven seconds of having a better outcome to this flight and probably could have been up to a C plus, maybe even a B. 
if I had realized how the OSD screens worked. <laughs> so we'll call this a C. But I learned a lot. I may have a lot more experience than a lot of viewers, but in electronics and how electronics work and making them work and all that crap. I might have more experience flying real airplanes than a lot of the viewers. But most of the viewers have a lot more experience than me flying drones with goggles because today was my first day. Never flown anything with goggles before today. And of course I was nervous. Probably why the goggles fogged up. <laughs> Oh, God. So while we're here, we don't need to be connected to the platform anymore. I'm going to disconnect and shut it down. But we're still going to use Mission Planner real quick to run over and look at the data flash log and see if there's any craziness in it. It's quite big when it goes five minutes. That was that full battery. It was actually seven minutes. So that battery might give me five minutes of uh, freestyle. Uh, look at the barrel real quick for altitude. God. I only went up to 200 feet. Right click, show point values. This shows 66. That's not even correct. So this scale down this side is not correct. So that's... Uh, I just learned more. I don't see a lot of errors down here. I'll have to go through them. I do see a GPS glitch or compass error, but that looked like it was after the end of the flight. Pre-arm battery one low voltage fail safe, but it didn't invoke. I pulled the switch. So this was down around that hundred. And this right here was 150 feet, 44. Wow. So see, I'm learning more and more. Here's another error GPS. I'll have to look. I'll uh, do a different thing. Yeah, see, land complete is, oh, that's GPS too. Well, we've seen that in some of the others. Yeah, this is well after the landing. Well after the landing. Yeah, I don't care. We never have ascertained if these errors take place on the leading edge of this graphic, the center of the graphic. I certainly doubt it's on the tail of the graphic, but it's one of these two, leading edge or center. Personally, I suspect leading edge, which is well after. So, the CAN bus GPS doesn't give me the errors that the GPS glitches that the M10Q5883s do. Uh, what else in here? Battery, nah. Voltage. Oops. I didn't get the altitude removed. There we go. 25 started out because I had some missed starts and stuff. Started out on takeoff probably right in here at 24.6. Twenty two point five twenty two point four nine. Right here's where it should have fail safe had I been calm enough to hang out. So it continued down while it came home to twenty two point two, which is what a lot of people set for the fail safe. Uh so it didn't hurt the battery. Current. Current was average of five. Five, five, five. As high as, I'm not going to count these spikes. 
Hi, it's almost six. Trying to see inside these messages with this for any kind of errors. These are just messages. These aren't errors anyway. Yeah, see, I started it up, then I disarmed it. That's got well, I got my OSD screen on the fourth screen, the stats screen, and then I armed it again just seconds later. <laughs> Yeah, these y'all resets, I'll have to figure out what those are. I am you zero and one. Oh well. I think that's where it's just being a little squirrely on takeoff while it's down in its ground effect. GPS. Number sats. Eleven here probably was in like thirteen to fourteen for takeoff. It climbed up, like say here it's gonna expose more and more sky, so it just climbs right up through seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20 sats this was probably its trip home and it got up to 21 there and as it came down into the hole I'm going to call the house here the hole it was losing satellites which is completely understandable and it got down and landed it and had lost so many it glitched but I don't see anything I should worry about Oh, now it's down through here. Uh, don't think there's much down through here. Could look at vibrations just for kicks and grins. 10, 20, 12. There's a vibration monitor on Mission Planner. If you've got telemetry to your ground station, you can look at it. Uh, it's EKF, right? Oh, vibe right here. This will show you that vibration. As long as it's less than 30, which you can see mine are, you shouldn't worry. Don't do anything about it. You shouldn't start worrying until it gets near 60. Over 60, you should worry. And see, I'm well below that, so I'm not very worried about vibration. Uh, the only vibration I'm worried about is I still, still see a little jello in it from time to time. So we'll be working that out after we get the general platform where we want it. So that's about it for today's flight. I finally did the flight from the house here that I've been trying to do for two weeks or more. Uh, my goggles fogged up. My glasses fogged up. I had to throw the glasses on the ground, but I took it out into the field. I can go up and fly from the corner of that field, and I will get farther and better because there won't be any leaves with water in them between me and the platform. Uh, things will be much better than out at my big flying fields the best. What else can I say? Uh, I think I'm to my flying time. There's just one simple little problem. Although I've never had a video transmitter on a quad and used goggles before today, I did, oh, about my fourth or fifth year flying the quads and stuff, visual line of sight. I finally did put a GoPro on one near the end there and flew a mile away and back. That was in 2015, before the 2016 rules. It's on my site. It, you can find it in my videos. Uh, I really do want to get to doing this with airplanes. 
I've played with quads a lot. My problem is is the seven inch and the five inch and the Sky Hunter with wheels were my winter bills for this winter, and I really want to get things finished before I move on. As soon as I feel these two quads are, they would be ready to ship to a person if I was building them for that person. Then I'll finally get to move on, although I have stuck in the little T1 Ranger VTOL in the mix. Uh, I'll be working with it a lot, and all the rest of them very soon, and I'll start building my goggles experience and my airplane experience and when I think and let you know that I feel like I'm competent with those things which I certainly don't yet I'll tell you that my path from a rover to a quad and from a quad to airplanes with all this is complete getting close that's all for today's guys thank you so much